Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today on The Film Exorcist, we're going to be interviewing a wonderful woman who has done a lot to bring so many people in the size community together. Her name is Jatensha, and she is the creator of SizeCon, and she is a very talented artist and writer. Personally, I've even read at least one of her comics involving the Sailor Scouts. So before we start, why don't you tell the people about yourself, Jatensha? Uh, hi everyone, I'm G Tensho. I am a tiny lady. I also draw comics, uh, mostly uh, Shrunken Woman, Giantess, and Giant related comics. Um, I also dabble in some like 3D game stuff, and um, I also founded SizeCon. Um, and that, that's about it. <laughs> okay. So in that case, let's get to the questions. So how did you get into the size community or when did you first realize you were into the dark side of things and size play in general? Um, I think for me it was pretty early on. Like I must have been maybe like four years old when I noticed that um, size content was really drawing me. And I didn't know why it was an interest, but it was. Um, and I, I think I was pretty, um, involved, like, with my size fantasy, even as a kid, like, I would play with my friends, like, size-related games, um, I think it wasn't until I was 10 years old that I started realizing that it was kind of weird. I had, um, it, like, it was my 10th birthday, and, um you know i was starting to get those dark feels like i not on my birthday but just like around that age like i was starting to get into puberty so i had a lot of like conflicting feelings about size about my size kink and on my 10th birthday um my mom asked me to um or she she offered me a somber party with me and my girlfriends and i really wanted to rent the incredible shrinking woman and even at the time, the movie, I think, was at least, like, 15 years old or something like that. So um, my mom was really surprised, and I insisted to the point that my mom ended up renting a second movie so that the girls wouldn't be, like, bored <laughs> with this old <laughs> movie. Um, and, yeah, I went to my slumber party, and, like, none of my girlfriends could give a shit about <laughs> And he, like I was like, oh my god, she's shrunken! Wow, look at this awesome adventure she's on. What's gonna happen next? And they were just like totally disengaged. So after that, um, I started feeling like super like shameful about it, and um, you know those dark feelings started coming in, and and I really, I, I mean, I became one of those people who like turned the Jesus frame around, like. <laughs> You know, when I masturbated, it was, like, such a huge, like, sin. Um, yeah, so it's it's been a, a long life struggle and pleasure for me. Hmm. I guess I kind of got to say I've done about the same thing. Um, around sixth grade, actually, I might have found out about it. Maybe third grade. There was this really weird book that my teacher read once, um... I guess it was about overcoming your differences and overcoming size. It was the big cheese on 3rd Street or whatever. Really oh, weird okay. book. And nobody else has ever heard of it other than me. I've never heard of it. No, I've never heard of it. That's that's crazy. But also I did try and do like the size games like you were talking about, but where we do like weird role plays where I'm a vampire trying to go after some people and I end up shrinking and the girls didn't really find it interesting or they found it really weird. Yeah, I, I feel like I try to be more low key about it. Like I'd be like, okay, let's play dentist. I'll be the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> like that was me. Like I, I'm a big bore person, so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, next question. What would you say your favorite scenarios are? And also, if you could imagine your own, what would they be? 
Okay, so we just talked about Vor. So literally, like, the things that get me going are Vor and Humiliation. Those are... I, I mean, there's other things um, that I like. I like the, the power play struggle, and I like... Um, I like messes just in general. Doesn't have to be... A, well, no, it is a Humiliation thing. But yeah, those those are my big two things um as far as like a specific favorite scenario like my dream life would be like being a tiny pet for some guy who um literally is just like wants to like scare me into thinking i'm about to die all the time from like a war scenario or a humiliation scenario or no, not necessarily every waking moment, but just like use those as like tools to kind of um, put me in my place. It's it's a really like fucked up fantasy, but it's it's hot. Like I just like it a lot. No, I can agree with it. I mean, <laughs> I've read that kind of shit. That's most of the stories I look for, and it's like you. I've always found it weird, but I mean, that's what most masochists are like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the biggest fetish inside and outside? Of, yeah, I think I already you already answered this one. What's the biggest fetish? Yeah, biggest fetish inside and outside of size play. Inside of size con, um, I would think usually like giant is it tends to be the most popular. Um, but I, I think that is also like the community is the most organized online. So it was literally no surprise to me whatsoever. Um, I, I mean, I think that at SizeCon we try and find people to, um, make sure that we got like our corners covered. Um, but at the end of the day, like if there's more giantess content or whatever, that's because we have like more hands on deck. Um, but yeah, that that seems to be the most pop, which is fine with me because I love giant pieces. So, um, but yeah, I I I would say like we don't have any like unpopular um, fetishes, but we do have like some that are um, out there. I guess like less. Not yeah, not out there. Just ones that we're starting to include in like our size umbrella, like weight gain, for example, or muscle growth. Um, uh, just because I think it benefits us as a community to be um, having more people available to us helps us when you're creating like FET events. People tend to be not as um, available or dependable. And so having a window of like, like, for example, like I'm not into breast expansion, but like I get the appeal and I like, I have no problem in volunteering my time or helping out people in that community. And like, we kind of like scratch each other's backs, uh, but you know, there's plenty of people at SizeCon who love shrunken women and breast expansion or giantess and butt expansion. Um, so there is that overlap. It just feels more like, um, like going to like a, a comic con. Like I might not like every single franchise that's on display there. I'm not going to go to every single panel, but I am going to find the panels and the booths and whatever that, that appeal directly to me. Um, so yeah, sorry. I got into the weeds a little with that. No, it's fine. Um, actually also the question was kind of you personally. Oh, me personally. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely top is like humiliation for, I'd say least favor would be, um, I, I, a lot of people are going to hate me, but I'm not a big foot person. I really am not. I totally agree. I, yeah. I, and let me tell you that, like, I've kind of opened up a bit to it. Um, cause my husband, he does like feet stuff. Um, and he'll kind of like make me do stuff to his feet, like just to piss me off. Cause he knows that I hate it. So, so it kind of like, he kind of makes it work. Um, I mean, my husband like, lo lo 
my husband likes lots of stuff so it's not like there's just like persistent like rub my feet kiss my feet it's not like that um but yeah he he kind of found a way to make it a little hot for me right still my least favorite sorry feet (laughs) you know butt guy here all the way i yeah. I'll write it in some of my stories, like the first one, but yeah, no interest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, same. Next question. What made you decide to help promote the community to others and help those who might be scared to come out with their kinks? Uh, so the reason why? Yeah. Okay, so um, it actually kind of started maybe like I, I I think it was like a year or two after I had gotten married and I was on a date with my husband at um at a museum and he started like whispering some like totally safe for work like he was gonna put me in his pocket like little cute things into my ear and I was like bro no like I cannot hear this I I got so red like I I, I freaked out. Like I told him to stop, and he kept saying the like sizey things to me, and I freaked out that I like ran away from him. Hmm. And he found me like sobbing, and he was like, he's like, yo, are you okay? Like it's fine. No one is going to put two and two together. No one's thinking like this, this girl with this weird fetish. Like no one is going to judge you like it's just you and me or it's just you and me talking like he's always been very open and accepting of my fantasies um so you know at that like moment it kind of clicked like I have a problem like he wasn't even saying anything sexual and I was like oh my god kill me now so um yeah it, it was um that kind of started it and then um I had for a long time kind of struggled finding a space for me within the community. Um, like I've always received a lot of harassment as a woman and like even in the SW community, I didn't feel a hundred percent like I belonged even with like my darker fantasies. They, they tend to have a bit more of like a hard line compared to like, let's say the, Um, straight giantess community or the gay giant community um they tend to be more open like yeah whatever he just like shits on this guy and rips him apart yeah but um the sw community is more like sweet handhelds put in a jar i don't want to see be seen as misogynist so like uh, there's like the dark community for sw has always kind of been in this like back alley like away from everything else um so i always felt really segregated and i wanted to make a space that i felt was um not going to be too like cringy like i wanted people to be able to talk openly and feel accepted like i i didn't want this to just be a convention of like i like vor you like vor yeah me too high five I mean, obviously there is elements of that at SizeCon, but we wanted to focus on like panels and events that um, helped educate and empower the people that came there. Because, um, you know, like I said, I I had a lot of questions and I wasn't, you know, there was an extra layer of like glass that I had to break through within the communities because they weren't... um, female friendly so making a space that was female friendly gay friendly and focused on like education and empowerment just seemed like it just seemed like the thing to do like I I had like just out of um, coincidence like my friend had invited me um, around this time to go to a furry convention and I, I had never gone to a furry convention and I didn't know what to expect and there was a lot of macro furs there people who were size kinky people but they also happen to be furries and they had you know their badges and they were showing off their pride they even had like an event where a bunch of the furries like trampled a like a 3d printed 
town or something like that hmm. and they live streamed it yeah so um i was like yo we could totally do this we could totally do this and um you know from the start we made sure that we had like a really diverse uh team kind of um starting this it, it like honestly year one if it wasn't for brian um i've talked about him in previous um like size con interviews he was the other co-founder with me for year one and two um i don't know that i could have done, like gotten this off the ground because i was a big dreamer person but i didn't know like how to do as much um so i love all the organizing i love getting all that together but it was definitely like um a huge effort on the community and i think we made a really amazing positive event right any movies other than the 50 foot woman that <laughs> might have influenced you as a kid or any today hmm I, I definitely liked The Borrowers a lot when I was a kid. Oh, um, that's a new one. I remember, yeah, I, I, my furthest size media memory that I can remember is seeing Fern Gully in the movie theater with my mom. I was a little, little kid. I think I was like four or five when it came out. And, um, yeah, that one definitely, I don't know, sparked something in me. The Incredible Shrinking Woman was also another one, even despite, like, that like <laughs> trauma that I had when I was 10 um I'm over exaggerating but uh that movie too it, it just made me feel like I was seen you know what I meant like there there wasn't um I don't think there's as much media that leans to, towards the SW side at least like in a pretty or elegant way not that Lily Tomlin is like the best example of that but I definitely felt validated seeing someone like that on screen right actually I find it funny between you giantess crew and size community or size talk that's who it was none of you have actually mentioned any of the honey I shrunk the kid movies you've always <laughs> said like those the were 50 definitely... No, those, those were definitely good. I I had all of them up, up into the third one. So those were definitely good ones, but they weren't like the first pieces of media that I saw. I like I definitely think back to like the war scene with um uh Wayne Zelinsky and his son. That definitely like or even when they're like running away from the sprinklers turning on, there's a lot of scenes that definitely like trigger something in me. But um, I, I think maybe because there wasn't as much like interaction between the tiny people and the giant people, like it, it just didn't hit me as hard as like Incredible Shrunken Woman, for example, or I guess Fern Gully didn't really have that much interaction because, like, Zach shrinks almost, like, immediately. Um, but that was the first time that I could ever even recall looking at size stuff. Hmm. So. Actually, there might have been one other book that actually influenced me that you might be interested in. You know the Goosebumps books, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it turns out, um, Arl Stein, not counting the Why I'm Afraid of Bees book, I don't really look at that as more of a objectification kind of fetish thing, but I think the book was called The Night of the Giant Everything. Really hard to oh. find. It came out around the time when the remake, remake book of the cat claws story came out oh okay i'll have to google that one because i didn't read that one the night the only problem with it is it doesn't really it confuses the sizes a bit like it says he's about an inch maybe three inches and he's 
getting attacked by a giant spider that's supposed to be normal sized. Oh, so it's... Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> I mean, it's still good, but it can yeah. get confusing, and I think it was kind of influenced by... I'm trying to think of a movie where they got kidnapped by scientists and experimented on. Mm. But it basically continues on like that for most of it. Oh, I see, I see. I'll, I'll Google it anyway. My, my, I don't know, there might be some bits that might be exciting. Skim through. I don't know. Okay, um, now for all you people, let's ask Detentia, who's your favorite giantess or tiny writer or artist? <laughs> okay, so um, I feel like there really isn't like anyone who makes content that's specifically for what my needs are. Um, and I know that sounds like like trying to like sniff my own fart here. I'm not saying like I'm the best of the best, but like I I do enjoy my content the most because it's catered. <laughs> me uh, I do have a list of the content creators that I want to shout out that I think are super cool they don't always 100% make what I like but it kind of it's the closest that I found um, the person that I want to shout out um, these are all people on Twitter is and they're all giants so I apologize they're not giant S's um, Lucan, who's Mr. Modicum, uh, at Mr. Modicum, um, Giant Soul Crusher, he usually just does gay content, but, like, it's called My Souls, and, um, the last person is Toll <laughs> underscore Ori Alcon, he's at Tori Alcon, um, so if you want to check out their stuff, these are giant guys. Um, but two out of three of them are also interested in dudes. So if you are a guy watching this and you're curious, check it out. Might be of interest to you. Okay. What would you say your favorite panel was during the last SizeCon Micro? And has there been anything new you'd like to try for the next one? Okay, so I'm going to start with what I'm excited about for the next one. Because I I'm still trying to figure it out. But for the next um, uh, SizeCon Micro, I'm looking to see if I could do like a VR chat private room where we can have like some sort of event there with like tiny avatars and giant avatars and stuff like that you so might want to be careful I'm... with that one because me and a couple of guys during the last one tried that and it it lagged like hell how many people did you have in a room about three. Oh wow yeah it was That's some so giantest room I don't remember where Natalie or Fairy found it but uh, yeah we tried the giantest morphs and it didn't really work that well oh well, I, we were gonna make uh, our own my husband and I were game developers by ah. profession so um, yeah I was gonna see if I could make like our own preferably like quest friendly mods so that more people could join and yeah just make like several several rooms and keep a cap on the room so it's not too laggy um but it, it's still in the early days of production we're still like i i was just talking about this with my husband yesterday because we had a size con micro meeting yesterday hmm. so yeah um but yeah so back to the favorite panel question um it's not necessarily I, i'd say a panel that's my favorite but the socials that are my favorite um if you're not familiar 
what the what socials are and how they differ from panels. A panel is you'll have panelists, people who are uh, answering questions like uh, pre thought up questions, and then we'll have the socials, which is kind of like big like AA meeting, everyone in a, in a circle. Like, yeah, I'm a tiny or I'm a giant. I like this, you know, and we we'll kind of just like validate each other and discuss like you know what uh hang hang ups we might have or you know maybe positive things happy relationships whatever it might be they're kind of like open spaces um to share so my favorite were the socials and specifically the sex ones because i feel like um for being a very like sex based community we actually don't talk very often even on forums like how we have sex you know like i'll give you my fantasy and then it's like okay and how do i translate that right into real life with my partner are you sure about that yeah i actually found that really interesting when we did that uh during uh, micro uh, 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 um, so uh, more of those when we do the next size con micro. Super awesome. They were. Um, now let's talk about your art. What can people expect next from what you, from what your very creative mind has to offer? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm actually almost done finishing up this like old prepaid pile of commissions that I have. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to be fully committed to working on a comic. Um, if you guys are familiar with my OCs, um, Veronica and Sergio, it's like a tiny redheaded girl and a normal sized guy with a short black hair and a birthmark by his eye. Um, but yeah, it's going to follow their story. It's going to be a very like serious story. I've been slowly like rewriting it for like t 10 years or longer so um i i finally found like a, a good spot where i can just stop and focus on this comic and that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna post it for free um so yeah uh, if you guys want to follow me on DeviantArt or Twitter, I go by the username ChitanshaSW, um, and I'll put updates uh, there when the comic is ready to uh, for release. All right. Would Sergio actually be a bit reflective of your husband, in a way? Yeah, so I actually have um, two characters, like two pairs of characters called Veronica and Sergio. Um, my redheaded Veronica and those characters I was just talking about, they're kind of based on, um, I guess, me and Sergio when we were in high school, how we looked. Um, they, they are older characters. They're in their early 30s, so um, they don't act like teenagers. But uh, they were originally based off on us when we started. I, I think I was like 18 or 19 when I met Sergio or befriended him or started. No, I started dating him. Yeah. So, um, but then I have an older version of us that I use for uh, other free comics that I put online called Pet Life. And they would discuss like BDSM and like role play with like size people and stuff like that. Um, and those were more, um, reflective of how my husband and I look currently. Um, but yeah, the, the original ones were just the, the personality of both of them is literally my husband. Like he very much is teasing me all the time. He's always busting my chops and I, I love it. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let me see. Let me think of something else maybe I'd like... Um... 
What would you say your most dirtiest idea could be? My dirt, like, for a comic or something? For a comic, for maybe out of your own imagination? Well, all my comics are out well. of my own imagination. I think there's only maybe two of them that I worked with another writer, but everything else I've written, drawn everything myself. I kind of said that um, the wrong way. I meant, like... <laughs> Not in a comic, but, like, personally, mentally. Like, just in my mind, but yes. not actually act out in real life. Right. Well, then I think that would tie into, like... Okay, so, yeah, I my worst... I, I guess, like, the, the grossest or the... What do you... You said the worst. Either right? one. Grossest, okay. darkest... Darkest, yeah. Okay, like so. I mentioned before something that has to do with humiliation. I'm a big like, I like potty play stuff. So like, a giant guy or or girl like shitting on me, pissing on me, like making me feel like I'm not even worth their time or insignificant. Um, and then, I mean, I think they'd probably want to wash me off before eating me, but. Hmm. Um, I really like Vor as like an end to it all just because I feel like it's a super, super submissive act. Um, and it, and it definitely feels like, like it would be a scenario that I'd have a lot of dread. You know what I mean? Like if right. I was clasped in a hand, I would feel like there's maybe this like 0.01% chance that, you know, I get loose somehow, so another person, a third party walks in and saves me, or, you know, I fight them and they let me go, something. But with Vor, it's like, that's it. Hmm. You're dead. Um, you know, I mean, you're, you're at the mercy of the person. They could, like, vomit you up, but you're essentially like, that's it. You're, you're pretty much dead. You're just food at that right. point. So that, for me, is like... Oh, heck yeah, I like being food. Okay. Um, I think we're getting close to the end. Do you have any questions for me? Maybe anything come to mind? I was actually really, like, curious and, like, pleasantly surprised about your channel because I, um, like, I, I just thought you just started doing these size-related videos. Well, yeah. it was actually inspired by SizeCon. I started doing them, and I figured a lot of people do these. I've seen Giantess Crew do a lot of crew interviews, so I figured, why not show the people a bit more? I mean, you guys inspired me to come out a bit more, come out and... I mean, like, a lot of the role plays I do on Twitter, I've been trying to hunt down people that can actually do a bit of size play, which it's actually really harder than you think. Most of them just want to have sex. But, yeah, and I've noticed a lot of people have been more into them. Um, compared to my anime views that usually get, like, 27, maybe 30 views, these get more like 700 Oh, wow. Which is really it surprising. Is, it is a very hungry market, and that's why, um, you know, like, I was so pleasantly surprised. Like, I'm just so happy to see more people um, feeling comfortable about, like, putting themselves out there, you know, for the sake of, like, normalizing what we have. Like, that it's not something that you should be ashamed about. Like, it's okay. You can live a happy, normal life while also having this interest so seriously props to you i'm happy congrats thank you and yeah. actually just according to what you've said you might actually be interested in the little sequel i'm working on the sequel to race for your life which does have a bit of the darker things like what you were saying the peeing on someone Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, please send me a link. I will gladly do that, and I might have actually just gotten my first commission if the guy can find me enough to work off of. Um, he's a Vore guy, similar to you. 
Oh, cool. Awesome. The only problem is I don't think I'm going to be able to deliver the 5,000 words. Oh, wow. That's, that's a long haul. That is a long haul. <laughs> See you. So yeah, guys, you heard it here. Check out my DeviantArt. Um, if you could, maybe you could mention those people again because I think we did cut out during the second Twitter. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so the people that I did want to shout out who are actually all giants are Lucan, who goes by at Mr. Modicum. Uh, the next person is Giant Soul Crusher. Uh, who's at under my souls and the last person is toll underscore Tori Alcon who, uh, it's at Tori Alcon hmm uh, there you have it people There's, yeah I actually love that second one just hearing it under my souls yeah you know, his videos are really good. Like, I, I'm not a foot person, and I... I don't know, it's just, like, the, the production quality. Like, I can tell this guy... He really gets the kink, you know what I mean? Right. So, and, and, and the quality is good. Like, sometimes you get, like, decent quality, but it, the videos are, like, eh. eh. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot. You can't really find any... They're good, but most of them are point of views or they're too clean. Most people just want to watch someone stomp on you, but if you want to watch certain things, it's really hard to find. Yeah. Which... Yeah, that's our curse. Go ahead. No, I was saying that's our curse. That is. It's always going to be hard to find stuff. <laughs> But, you know, the more we talk about it, the more we're out here and the more we normalize it, you know, a, a lot of the three guys that I just mentioned are all very new to the community. So, um, like, at least two out of the, no, maybe all three of them I haven't even seen after, like, like maybe a year or two prior. Like, I never had heard of them. So hmm. there's new people who are being attracted to, like, what we're building, um, so I think it just like benefits us as a community to be more organized and be more open. Um, we'll, we'll definitely become a, I don't know, maybe we'll have those awesome like VR like worlds that we wanted, like spelunking and like a giant pussy or <laughs> like getting crushed to death under a nice ass or something. I, don't I know. wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Let me tell you, they have like, suits that have like temperature control and like um gloves that let you feel pressure and stuff like that the tech is just gonna get better and better i'm excited for the future same hopefully we get to see that future yeah the more we organize i'm saying and we can build those things just for us because we know that we can't leave it to like big media Right? I'm sure we've all gone to like a movie or bought a book or something and we're like, oh yeah, there's like a hot giant or giant test on the cover. I'm, I'm going to read the shit out of this and then you get through it and you're like, wow, there was like a page of content. Right. Like I just wasted all this money on this book or this comic or this movie or whatever it is. You know, I am kind of yeah. mad at those certain movies where you just, I think uh, Disney Channel did it once. They had like a small dream sequence where it was Teddy's normal size and then her younger sister comes in and just grabs her and then that's it. Small dream. Nothing came out of it. And they do that a lot. Yep. I mean, I think someone actually mentioned to me, uh, someone got into this through... Ant Bully somehow and the main thing he's really interested I think his name is Small Skittles on Twitter I mean Instagram and he said he fell in love with it through Tiffany because of this one scene where she tries to smash an ant with a telephone and that's it 
Mm-hmm. I can see that. Oh, and one other aspect I've noticed, and I've actually made friends with this really nice woman on Twitter who sadly is a bit depressed. She feels she's not getting anywhere because, one, she's transgender. Her name is Hypno Princess V on Twitter, and she's really good. She does a lot of, or is trying to do, a lot of hypnotic videos where... She has you believe you're a tiny person using her voice, and sadly, it doesn't get much there. And part of it might be, I've noticed, there are hypnotists out there, but you can't really find that many content on, like, giantists and things like that. A lot of them just do, like, what was it? No, I was going to say, I think that there's still, like, a really big disconnect on, like, in our community on, like, fantasy and, like, practical fantasy. And we've actually discussed Hypno Kink at SpiceCon in the past and even had um, demonstrations on how you can use um, hypnosis. And this isn't, like, to sound like, like, I'm, I'm a super, like, atheist, like, I don't. I, I just believe things, like, uh, for its face value. Like, I, I don't believe in anything that I think is unexplainable. And this isn't one of those things. You're not being put into, like, some weird, um, like, trance where you can't, you know, like, if you were in danger or something, like, you can't, like, snap out of it. But it, it does put you in, like... Um, a place where you can more easily just like tune out everything else and just like hyper focus on this one thing and if you're a submissive or a tiny like myself like I would kind of compare this hypnotic state with being in subspace like when I'm role playing with my husband you know there's just a moment where it's like well he's this character and I'm this tiny character and that's all that I'm focusing on and so he could tell me that he's you know binding me up and I I'll just believe it like I'm not you know if, if I really needed to get out of it obviously I would not feel like he's binding me with like his floss or something like that you know but um yeah hypno kink is really like underappreciated in the community and I think that it would really benefit people to learn more about it because, um, you know, like I said, we're all still, there isn't like a guidebook for us on how to do things in the bedroom. Um, so we should definitely be exploring different, you know, paths to see what, what can work for us. Right. Um, yeah. Actually, there was one I found that was super effective. I think I'm, Blanking on the name, it's Shy Shyby says or Shuri or Shirley says, but it really put me out for like 45 minutes, and I can't visual it, but I can feel it, and I can find a get a connection to it. Mm-hmm. And sadly, it's the only one I've found. Like you said, it's very underappreciated. Yeah, it's such a shame. It is. Um, so, before Silva starts charging me for, like, a hundred bucks, I think we should end this. (laughs) Sure, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Um, anything else you'd like to say to the people? Um, just check me out, jutentiasw.com. Check out my DeviantArt, check out my Twitter, um, check out my comics. I have like 40 adult comics on my shop. Most of them are anywhere between like 5 to 12 bucks-ish. So, you know, instead of a Big Mac today, come check out Stench. I get a comic, have a happy fap. And, you know, consider joining SizeCon Micro in the future if you guys want. Um, we are planning... Uh, event hopefully for late winter um so stay tuned for that there's uh, you know your communities out there come join us 
it. You heard it here, guys. That was Jatensha on the Film Exorcist. We'll see you guys next week with more anime and maybe Jatensha knows some more people we could interview here. Maybe I could find some people. We'll see you guys next week.